Hello, everyone. Welcome back. I have Daniel with uh, AKA Hashlips back with us, and we are going to talk about 1155 contracts today. Welcome back, Daniel. We're going to talk about the ERC 1155 contracts. I think like the biggest use case is in gaming, but what are your thoughts and, uh, and how are you doing? Hey, JC. Thank you for having me back. Um, you hit the nail on the head. Absolutely for gaming. So a lot of people think about 1155, maybe it's a good use case to replace the 721, but you really have to do it by use case. Um, you know, 1155s are great for games because they're also non-fungible tokens, but think of it as non-fungible, like the, each one is separate, but there's many of that exact same one. And that's great for game items. Like you have a Warhammer in a game, there could be a hundred of these exact same Warhammers. And uh, that's how I can best describe it. Yeah, no, I think uh, so. Uh, the best way for me to think of it, it's almost like contracts within contracts. So you've got your contract, which then has, you know, however many items within it, but each item is really like another contract, which then houses, uh, you know, tokens that, that can then be distributed. Is that like a, a good summary of, of the overall uh, structure there? Yeah, that is perfectly fine to look at it like that. It works a bit differently in the contract itself. So, but it's a good description of, of kind of what you, if you imagine a 1155 to be. Um, but how the contract actually works is it assigns a kind of mapping of your tokens. And then, you know, uh, let's say you have for instance, a Boolean shop or something. So we have gold, silver, um, and bronze, right? Each one of those would be an identified token. So gold may be token one, uh, silver two, and bronze three. So someone with an address can come and say, I own 20 of token one, meaning that they own 20 of the gold one. And someone else, you know, five of the bronze one, which is number three. So each item is still identified by a token ID, but yes, there can be many of that same token in one contract. So it's not necessarily many contracts inside one, um, but if you can uh, imagine that, that's kind of how it feels like, right? Because there's like uh, many tokens of one, uh, but technically just it just still works on, on variables and then assigns it like that. And I think, you know, obviously there are other use cases. Uh, gaming, I think, is the biggest one. But if you're an artist and, and you have a collection, you want to have a limited edition of each one. Maybe you have uh, 10 uh, of, of each type of NFT that you want to distribute. That's another uh, route. Uh, can you think of any others? I'm, I'm kind of drawing a blank on what, what are the other, any other use cases? Oh, wow. Yeah, I mean, there's so many use cases for, I mean, NFTs in general. I guess where 1155s really shine is like you mentioned in the beginning games um, or when you have to have a bunch of the same kind of thing, I would say maybe tickets to an event. Maybe you could have three tier tickets and there's going to be a thousand of the first tier, mm. two thousand of the second and three thousand of the third and um, so on. You can then distribute these amongst uh, peers. And uh, I think that's maybe a, another use case, you know, because it doesn't make sense to have a full on 721 um, unless you want to have three different contracts or specified in the metadata. And that's really when 1155s are better because also, you know, in some cases it might be cheaper to transfer because you could bulk transfer items. So instead of sending one by one to an individual, you can say, well, let me send a 50 of one to my friend. That's another use case uh, I, that that's a good point there. Bulk transfers. Awesome. So uh, I think being able to identify, you know, which contract is right for your use case, that's very important. So if you're going to go uh, 721, 1155, there are a few others as well, but understanding these, and that's kind of the point of this video is helping you understand, you know, what exactly is an 1155 contract for. So, uh, so I think that's going to be it for this video. Uh, thanks everyone for joining. Do you have anything, uh, any last words to add to, to 1155 contracts, Daniel? Yeah. I mean, just make, just do your uh, research on which ones to use. And I mean, that's exactly right, Jesse. Each one has their own use case. 
So that's about it for LM55 from my side. Awesome. All right. We'll see everyone later. Thanks.